Hello, and welcome back from a long absence to both our Sashimi video series tutorials and official releases of Sashimi. I'm happy now to bring you version Sashimi 8.0. Let's jump right into it by loading Sashimi up. Uh, there haven't been a lot of changes on the surface of things in Sashimi 8.0, but there have been quite a few changes underneath the hood in the code to support additional devices like the Omnia, the Touch Pro, different versions of Windows Mobile version 6.1 and 6.5, multiple resolutions, and additional storage card options for the automated storage card feature uh, that so many Sashimi users like to use. Uh, I urge you to definitely read the documentation of Sashimi 8.0 and the release notes to make sure that you're fully aware of all the new features and all of the old features and how to use Sashimi. If you have any questions uh, or, or requests for Sashimi, any problems with it, please visit us at the forums at www.winmo-experts.com, which is shown right here on the main Sashimi screen. Let's go ahead and jump right into some of the changes in Sashimi 8.0. One of the biggest changes you're going to see on the face of things is in our settings menu. We have a new advanced settings menu, which has taken together a lot of the miscellaneous settings from previous versions of Sashimi, as well as some new settings here. And a couple of the settings I just want to point out, all of these are covered within the documentation, is that on previous versions of Sashimi, when you have run and install in auto mode, the auto phase, at the end of the install, Sashimi would not reboot the device, but would rather just exit. Uh, the new default behavior is to automatically reboot when it is completed. However, if you wish to change that back to the old behavior, you just simply need to double click on the option here and you'll see it has toggled that setting to off. The next advanced feature that I want to explain is for those of you who have had troubles in the past using Sashimi's automated storage card install. Sashimi's behavior in version 8.0 works like this. Whatever location you have installed Sashimi to is the location that Sashimi will use to install cabs when you place them in the SC directory. So if you have installed Sashimi to your storage card, or you have installed Sashimi to internal storage, or you have installed Sashimi to my storage, that is the location that any CAB files that you place in the Sashimi SC directory will get installed. But what if you have multiple locations? Let's say you have both a storage card and a my storage location, and you've installed Sashimi to your storage card, but you want Sashimi to automatically install cabs to your My Storage location. This is where the alternate storage location comes in. In this location, in this setting, we define the location that we want Sashimi to install cabs to. So let's say I have a My Storage location, and that's where I want Sashimi to install the cabs to. That's what I will type in here. Because I'm using an AT&T Tilt or a HTC Kaiser, I only have a storage card location, so I don't really need to fill anything in here. But just for demonstration purposes, I am going to fill in a location with the same location that Sashimi is installed to, storage card. Again, in normal circumstances, you wouldn't need to do this, but for demonstration's sake, I'm showing you this here. To further understand how this works, we need to go ahead and look at the Sashimi file structure which you'll see now we have a couple of additional directories. So again, anything you place in this SC location will be installed to the same storage location that you have installed Sashimi into. We'll see I have two cabs in that location right now. Anything I place in my ASL location, which we'll see we've placed a single cab, will get installed to the location that I've defined in Sashimi's alternate storage location setting, which again, we have specified as storage card. So in my case here, both these locations are the same, but that won't necessarily be the case on your device. There's also a new directory called the skip directory, and any cab files that are in here will just simply be skipped. So if you want to temporarily move some cab files out of the auto install, you can just move them into this directory we see we've got one cab file there now. The other thing I want to note in Sashimi version 8.0 
is that the auto cab files, the auto tandem files that you can use to automate cab installs even further, the format has been entirely changed. We'll go ahead and we'll open up this auto file and you'll see it, instead of looking like a Mort script file like it did in previous versions, it looks like an any file. So if you were using auto files with previous versions of Sashimi, you will need to recreate those, but the format is much simpler now. You simply define under the auto file where you want it to be installed, zero being device memory, one being the SC location, two being the ASL location. You define the window title that's going to need to be automated. And then finally, you specify the script commands that you want Sashimi to execute. If you've used auto files before, this should make sense to you. If you haven't, I urge you to take a look at the documentation. So after we've taken a look at the new file directories, let's go ahead and just begin an auto run of Sashimi so that you can see how it functions. So what we should expect, again, is that everything in my ASL location gets installed to the ASA, ASL, which in this case is storage card. Everything in the SC location gets installed to where Sashimi is installed, which in this case is also the storage card. Everything in the skip directory is skipped, and that my FlexMail file here, because it's using an auto file, will be fully automated. Let's go ahead and initiate an auto phase install. And again, remember from this point forward, I'm not touching anything on my device. Hands off. So we see FlexMail beginning its installation here, going to be chosen to install to device memory since that is where the auto file defined. And the auto file also automatically accepts the license agreement since we put those appropriate commands in the auto file. Now Sashimi will begin processing everything in the ASL and SC locations. Okay, we see they're being chosen to install to the appropriate location, storage card. And the auto phase is complete. We'll see that it's not resetting our device because I toggled that option off in the settings. And if we go ahead into our and our add remove programs here, let's go into that. And we'll see that our cabs, there's one cab that got installed, our second cab that got installed, uh, our third cab that got installed. Down at the bottom is our flex mail that got installed. And the uh, WVGA fix that I put in the skip directory, you'll see has not been installed. So the auto run successfully completed, installed everything we wanted into the appropriate locations. If I go ahead and I, uh, well, those, I can't really show you the install to storage card because those cabs didn't have anything in them. So there's really nothing to see. So you'll have to take my word for it there, but you saw during the automated install that storage card was successfully uh, selected. So that's it for this final uh, video that we have here on Sashimi 8.0 and the latest release. Again, if you have any questions or uh, feature requests or problems using Sashimi, again, contact us at www.winmo-experts.com. Thanks very much and happy flashing.